Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 23, and today we are going to go through the top 10 things the new Superman film needs to be a great movie. Now, this is just my own personal top 10, and yours may be different. So let me know in the comments below your top 10, and we can see how similar or different our lists are. Now, at number 10 for me is that they need to use real on-set locations and as as little green screen as possible. This movie needs to feel real, and a major issue modern superhero films have are that many of them are mostly filmed on green screen. There is a huge over-reliance on green screen which I believe is severely damaging the quality and realism of these movies. I actually think there would be far less complaints about these films if they actually felt real and not like the studio was just churning out green screen entertainment. Fortunately, it already looks like this is something James Gunn is doing, and he is also building large sets too. This is something he has done throughout his time in the superhero genre, and looks to be bringing into the Superman movie. Large scale sets for scenes like the Daily Planet will be ideal, but I really want them to use real locations for scenes at Kent Farm, and potentially even scenes in Metropolis if possible. Two fictional locations, but they can use real physical farms and cities to replicate the look they are going for. Which leads me into number 9. The film needs to have great CGI. Once again, way too many superhero films are releasing with below par CGI, and that is due to two reasons. One is that they are now relying on their CGI departments way too much, and secondly, they are rushing them to get the CGI done, leading to weak and fake looking CGI that causes the audience to feel less engaged with the movie. For me, one of the best best parts about great superhero films are when they feel real, when they feel like they actually took place, as if this was no longer a movie, but instead real life. When you can sell to the audience that what they are seeing is real, or as real as a superhero flying through the air can be, then you really are on the right path to creating a fantastic movie. And fortunately, yet again, this is something James Gunn is already focused on. He has been sending over shots already to the VFX department so they can get to work on the CGI for specific scenes they have already filmed. The movie will also have almost an entire year in post-production, meaning the CGI should be as perfect as it can be. So hopefully, the CGI will be great. Now, moving on to number eight, I want to leave the cinema feeling that I want more. Now, I know that is an obvious thing to want from a movie, but this isn't just for the Superman film. This is for the DCU as a whole. This movie is the beginning of a whole new cinematic universe, and if I don't come out of that cinema going, wow, I can't wait to see what the DCU has in store, then the film has hasn't done its job. I need that film to be on my mind for more than just a couple of hours after I've seen it. I need to want to see that film again in the cinema, and for it to create excitement in me for the future of the new DC Universe. What's very important in wanting to see a movie again is remembering key moments from the film, which is why at number 7, I think the movie needs to have an iconic Superman shot. We've had one in basically every Superman film, and it tends to be the most memorable moments of the entire movie, and this film needs to have one too, whether that be standing in the Fortress of Solitude or a shirt rip scene. Whatever it is, it needs to happen. Superman is the most iconic superhero of all time. The S is the second most recognized symbol in the world behind the cross, so for a Superman movie to not have an iconic scene would be doing a disservice to the character. And what would help with that iconic scene is number seven. Six. This movie needs to have a great Superman theme and overall score. I need to be humming and whistling the theme after I see the movie. I want to be excited to play the score as I drive home back from the cinema. I've said this before in most of my movie reviews, but for me, a great score can lift a movie from a good film to an amazing film. But a bad score can drop a movie from a decent film to a terrible film. The music is vital to me, and without having an iconic 
iconic theme, this Superman will become forgettable. I hear John Williams' theme, and I instantly am transported to Christopher Reeve's Superman. And the same goes for Henry Cavill's Superman when Hans Zimmer's theme plays. Those are two iconic pieces of music that are as connected to those versions of the characters as the costumes they wear. So David Sweat's theme has to be iconic, and if the composer John Murphy can't create an iconic theme, then it was a terrible decision to hire him, and I would actually prefer him to use John Williams' score rather than using an original bland score he made himself. Not only do I want a very strong score, but I also don't want Gunn to implement actual songs into the film the same way he has done in the past. I don't want scenes to feel like music videos, especially for a Superman movie. I'm not saying songs can't be in the film, because they definitely can, but they can't be anywhere near as common as they are in his Guardians films. What I would love is if he chooses songs where the lyrics actually help tell the story or match with how the character is feeling. Things that can really help elevate the story, but I don't want a big action scene to happen and we have a pop song playing over the back of it. I think it would just ruin the entire scene for me. And speaking Speaking of action, number five is that this film has to have intense action in it. I'm talking Man of Steel or Godzilla vibes to it. It has to sell the power of these characters. What transformed my perspective of Superman in live action was seeing the raw strength of Superman in Man of Steel. Not necessarily the destruction within that film, but the speed and power of him was unlike any other hero we had seen at the time. That kind of aggressiveness really sold how strong this Superman was, and I think that is the bar now. If this Superman doesn't have that intensity to him, then he will feel far weaker, and I actually think the fight scenes will feel far slower and less entertaining. In Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Adam Warlock was the closest thing to Superman, and the way his powers, flight, and action was shown was far weaker than I had hoped. It was quite slow, and it meant that the scenes didn't feel as intense as they could have felt. So I hope for Superman, we see intense, fast action that feels like a spectacle. And what would help with making scenes feel like a spectacle is number four, which is a must. We need to have great cinematography. Now the cinematographer for Superman, Henry Braham, worked with Gunn on Guardians 2 and 3 and The Suicide Squad, and I think the visuals got worse with every film's release, which is a big worry for Superman. You don't want the film looking bland and flat, which is unfortunately how I felt for quite a bit of Guardians 3 and The Suicide Squad. But both films did have some great visuals, and hopefully the cinematographer can utilize the very best of his talents to create a visually beautiful movie, but I'm just not sold yet on that happening. Now, as we get into the top three, these are the most important things that need to happen for this film to be great. And number three is a big worry of mine, purely because of James Gunn's previous superhero movies and the way the superhero genre has been heading in general. For me, the humour needs to take a step back, but at the same time, it also must still be there. I don't want another superhero movie where the characters are all comedians and are constantly cracking jokes, no matter how big the stakes are. I need these characters, especially Superman, to not be comedians and for them to take dangerous situations seriously. But that doesn't mean I want them to all be serious all the time. There needs to be a balance. Superman is a beacon of hope, so he should be smiling and potentially even cracking the odd joke here and there if an opportunity presents itself. But when the danger increases, he needs to be able to knuckle down and not make jokes when taking on the villain. If the main character is joking around when what is supposed to be a dangerous situation, then I know what I'm seeing isn't actually that dangerous, which makes me care about what's happening far less. I need the stakes to feel high. I also think there needs to be a change in the humour used. I think Gunn seems to go with the same immature, stupid humour with most of his characters, which I do love and honestly is my kind of humour, but I think it's good to vary it. Have some dry humour, some subtle jokes, and have some immature humour if it works for the character. But they need to strike a balance so that it doesn't feel like I'm being smacked in the face with the same formula that the Guardians movies used. In fact, my favourite character in those films is Drax, because his humour is the most unique. It's dry and unimaginable,
unintentional, but also hilariously egotistical, and sometimes so stupid it's smart. And that's what I want from this Superman movie. If there is going to be humour, which I do want, but just not a lot of, I want the humour to be rare and more varied from character to character. So it doesn't feel like a constant thing occurring, and it also doesn't feel like they are all coming from the same comedian recycling the same material. And at number two, the movie needs to be focused on Superman and Lois. There are a lot of characters in this film, and a real difficulty this movie will have is ensuring that it still feels like a Superman movie. This can't feel like a Superman and Friends film. It needs to be focused on Clark's and Lois's story, with the other characters only enhancing the main character's story. And fortunately, Gunn has said this will be the case, but the movie itself will show us if what he is saying is true. And at number one, we have the most important factor to making this movie great. Nothing else can replace this at number one. If this doesn't happen, then the movie will be terrible. And that is that Superman has to lose the trunks by the end of the film. There is no way on earth we can have a modern day Superman flying around with trunks on the outside of his costume. Of course I'm only joking, and I know I got some of you there, but the actual most important thing this film needs to have is a great story. Without that, none of the previous nine things I mentioned matters. The story is king, and without it you have another generic superhero film that will be forgotten in a few weeks. Gunn has said that every DCU project will have the story as the priority, and that is what we like to hear. But once again, the movie itself will show us if that will be the case. I want this film to be hopeful, emotional, inspiring, a bit funny, and quite epic. And that will all happen if we have a great story. The Superman movie has so much potential, and I think with these 10 things I have listed, the movie will be able to reach its potential. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, let me know your top 10 in the comments below. We've just got over a year until the film comes out, and I think it would be really interesting to re-watch this video after the movie releases, and go through how many things within our top 10s actually came true. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Man. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!